Hi, I'm Doug Black at Inside HPC. And today we're talking with Vic Malyala, Senior Vice President at ServerMaker Supermicro, which recently uh, launched its server lineup based on AMD's new 7003 series processors. Uh, Vic, welcome. Thank you, Doug. Thanks for having me. So uh, my interest naturally is in uh, Supermicro's offering for supercomputing and enterprise HPC. Can you give us um, a top line assessment of your Epic hardware portfolio for those markets? Absolutely. Um, as you are well aware, and so is our community, uh, Supermicro made its name uh, by bringing the latest and greatest, especially related to high performance uh, computing. Um, you know, first to market. I think that's always been our mantra for success. And uh, we continue to extend that uh, leadership and uh, that DNA. And uh, what we have done uh, when you take a look at uh, uh, Epic is that it's a, it, it, with the number of cores and with the frequency and uh, all the other bells and whistles that come with it, by bringing that uh, in our Supermicros innovative architecture, uh, we are able to actually make a difference. Um, the good part here is that uh, we have realized over a period of time, this whole uh, HPC world has uh, evolved quite a bit, not just uh, you know, uh, very big national labs, but also in research institutes and, uh, you know, uh, commercial front and enterprise customers, uh, you know, every area that you can think of, um, there is HPC. And uh, the type of deployment, size of products vary quite a bit from one to other. And because of our way of bringing that, we are able to address that. So case to point is that uh, if you take a look at our dense computing, uh, typically uh, the twin architecture and the blade. So we have big twin and we have a twin pro and we have super blade. Uh, this is like, you know, the uh, you know, smack center of this market and we are able to uh, bring that. At the same time, we also have seen increased adoption of uh, accelerators in the HPC. Uh, and because of that, we have to have different type of uh, uh, GPUs and uh, other vector accelerators supported. So we have our uh, um, Delta and Redstone, which is a four and eight GPU with uh, very uh, high speed uh, uh, fabric between them. That is one type of product. Another one is a 4U8 GPU platform, which is a standard PCIe type of form factor. Um, in addition to that, we also have um, products that are uh, standard 1U2 to you pizza boxes. Uh, these are the ones typically uh, used either for very big memory footprint or used for uh, you know, storage that is needed for HPC. So the gamut of these products is like you know quite vast and uh, you know anywhere from dense computing going all the way to uh, maximizing uh, the I/O and uh, uh, memory footprint. Okay, great. Um, what what is um, what is getting back to the, uh, the the new chip itself? What is Supermicro's assessment of the uh, the new epics and how much of, a, of an advance are they over existing x86 chips? And um, if you could put that in the context of how that impacts your server lineup. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting point. So one of the things, um, you know, in the previous generation of uh, Epic itself, um, you know, AMD has brought in uh, this up to 64 cores and 128 lanes PCI Express and 3200 megahertz memory and all that. So, you know, one might think like, you know, what's the big deal? The big deal here is that uh, they were able to further squeeze more performance uh, within that. So, for example, if you take a single uh, processor within the same uh, thermal profile, uh, they were able to increase uh, the core frequency or increase uh, the amount of cache that uh, goes on the processor. Uh, and um, as well, basically increase the core frequency because uh, one of the important things is, uh, you know, uh, going to be like, you know, how do we improve the performance per core versus uh, per socket? And especially when you're going in a dual socket, uh, they also improve the interconnect between the CPU. So the bandwidth and the speed uh, kind of comes into picture. So um, when we turn all these things into what we can do in Supermicro in our platforms, what we have done is we tuned these uh, platforms to make sure that we bring the best from uh, you know what AMD has to offer in the third generation Epic. Uh, basically, uh, be able to provide uh, you know uh, different form factors and be able to get the GPU support, be able to connect uh, the fastest uh, it, uh, in, uh, interconnect, for example, the HDR200, multiple of them, and be able to support PCIe Gen4, uh, NVMe, uh, U.2 or M.2. So if you take a look at all the uh, you know different technologies that are available today, how we are able to bring it together and how we are able to connect it with Epic, 
through our platforms. I think that's the way we are able to, um, you know, kind of bring the technology. Um, and uh, if you take a look at uh, the workloads and all, you know, there are different workloads that we can go after that are focusing on high frequency, like a EDA type of workloads and uh, automotive workloads versus um, uh, the ones that require, uh, that, that are massively parallel. You know, if you take a look at uh, something like, uh, um, you know, like a WRF type of thing, uh, where you are talking about more number of cores and memory bandwidth, all these things, again, we are able to bring in Supermicro's uh, platforms to optimize. So that way people can take it depending on what the workload is and they can run with it. Yeah, and it, you know, that density, uh, the seven nanometer, uh, very impressive. So in your announcement of the um, Epic-based servers, you discuss record, set, record setting performance. Can you sh share some details in that area and how much faster your new servers are than than uh, right. previous so models. I think uh, th there are a couple of ways to look at it, right? Like one is uh, uh, making sure what the processor has to offer, we are able to bring all the features and functionality without any compromise, right? Because, you know, one may have the top in processor and if you are able to, if you are not able to cool it well, then it's going to throttle. For example, we were able to uh, have these processors supported both with forced air cooling and direct liquid cooling including immersion cooling, depending on, you know, where the customers want and how they want to uh, use the available power in, you know, for the computer, for the overall uh, cooling of, uh, you know, shared between uh, the compute and the cooling and things like that, right? So that's one way to look at it. And from our point of view, we looked at uh, what are the different workloads that people could actually benefit from? Because you have seen, especially, you know, uh, through pandemic, uh, people don't have access to the systems to, you know, receive them and put them in the lab and test it out or whatnot. So we kind of took it upon ourselves to run different benchmarks and even at an application level and see what we can get and whether it is something that we can provide the customers for easier adoption. So for example, uh, if you take a look at uh, you know ML perf, which is a typical indicator of uh, the artificial intelligence and machine learning uh, benchmarks, we actually have um, you know run these things with our uh, uh, Epic uh, you know, Gen three based with both Delta and Redstone, and we have published that data there. So one can see that uh, it's not just uh, uh, you know like a you know a, a product that we are putting out there. You can see a generational improvement, especially in the processor side, you know eight to ten percent on a very high bin versus uh, you know, in the, the middle end, you are actually able to see you know, 20 to 30% improvement from the prior generations. Um, one of the other things that we also have seen is uh, storage being a very, imp very important factor. Uh, you know, we actually work with uh, Veka as an example for a parallel file system. And in, a, in just six nodes with a single socket uh, Epic processor in our uh, WIO platform, we were able to do about 217 gigabytes per second read performance and with uh, roughly around 7 million IOPS, which is pretty damn good. And that's the reason I think, you know, uh, people, you know, whoever want to take it now, they can just, uh, you know, take it as a turnkey solution or take it as a reference design and run with it. Uh, other one that we also have seen is, uh, you know, spec JBB, one of these Java performance uh, that people are looking at, whether it's a critical ops or the max ops, we are able to bring the right value at a node level. And also uh, when you are uh, scaling across multiple nodes. So we ran it, for example, across uh, our um, uh, Superblade. In a Superblade, uh, compared to the previous generation, the top bin versus now when we uh, plug it in, we were able to see a 36% improvement in performance. This is phenomenal, right? And we are able to do that because we are able to get the right platform associated with it to do that. Um, other ones we also have seen is, uh, you know, while, while the actual benchmark final results is not out, uh, we have done this uh, weather research simulations and forecasting and the open form, which is mostly involved in like, you know, very complex, uh, you know, fluid movements and explosions and uh, chemical reactions, um, you know, all these different, different types of things. Bottom line, um, it's, it's, it's going to be a huge effort for us to kind of complete all these things, but we have put effort in that and uh, we were able to see performance improvements anywhere from, you know, uh, eight, eight to nine percent all the way going to like, you know, 40 percent, depending on the workload and depending on the platform and processor that you choose. Okay, uh, pretty impressive speed ups, no doubt. I was also impressed that Supermicro had its Epic servers available, uh, not just announced, but available the day AMD announced the new Epics. So um, that's isn't that kind of unusual? And tell us how that came to happen. Um, 
unusual for most, but you know, to be honest, Supermicro, you know, we take pride in bringing uh, you know technology first to market, and we have been we closely work with our technology partners, um, and that actually enables us to uh, kind of uh, bring it uh, to the market first. Um, Another way to look at it is Supermicro built uh, the entire product portfolio based on our Supermicro building block approach. Uh, so different pieces of the puzzle is already there and we were able to bring it together and uh, uh, evaluate. Um, one, one other thing here is that it's a socket compatible. So several of these platforms that we have been already uh, selling with our Roam and we, uh, we already made it ready to go with uh, Milan by using a BIOS update and we were able to plug in uh, Milan and we are able to uh, get it go. So, um, and over a period of time in the last like one, one and a half years, we also have looked at the gaps in our product portfolio and added them. For example, our uh, FatWin product line, our 2U2 node and our WIO uh, you know, plus, uh, as well as the Cloud DC. All these platforms are added to uh, expand uh, the portfolio but at the same time uh, filling in the gaps uh, because the time that we had and because the products that we already have developed and the building block approach and everything kind of developed in-house uh, gave us this unique ability uh, to kind of launch all these products on day one. I see. So socket compatible building blocks. So you're kind of halfway there uh, when the new chips come out, I see. Exactly. So yeah. Um, now, how, how does Supermicro uh, distinguish itself from other leading server makers competing in the HPC and supercomputing markets? So again, uh, if you take a look at um, the the overall strategy of Supermicro, our methodology is uh, a building block and ground up, right? So if you take a look at uh, um, many uh, HPC providers, the, they go top down. They have like you know few SKUs and then they kind of push it across different workloads. Ours is exactly the opposite. Um, if you take a look at the product line, whether it's a single socket uh, or a dual socket, uh, one DIM per channel design or two DIM per channel design, whether you want a standard one, you two, you pizza box, or you want a multi-node going all the way to 20 nodes in an A2 form factor with a 200 gig uh, you know, InfiniBand connection and NVMe as a part of it and uh, di different accelerators, whether you want to plug in one GPU, two, four or eight uh, type of GPUs, whatever the kind of fabric connected, uh, all these things validated and um, you know uh, ready to roll. Um, again, uh, no two customers are same. There is no one size fits all. And uh, especially the way the HPC is evolving, uh, people have different needs. And uh, this gives us this unique ability to differentiate from the competition and bring the right value to the customers. I think that's where uh, we shine. And that's where we bring the value. Right. So meet the customer where their where their HPC needs are. Uh, well, great, Vic. Uh, great to be with you. Great to be with Supermicro today. Thanks for joining us. I appreciate it. Thanks for the opportunity. Thanks.